All right, so let's go ahead and get our hands dirty. Uh, let's go ahead and move into Eclipse and we're actually gonna write the code to annotate our Java class. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna create a new package to hold this class or this entity. So what I'll do is I'll simply just right click on this package that I have. Actually, I'll right click on source and I'll say new package. And the name I'll give for this package, I'll call it com.love2code.hibernate.demo.entity. And again, I'm just creating a new package where I'm gonna place my actual entity class. And then I'll hit finish. All right, great, so I have this new package. It's empty right now. So let's go ahead and add a new class to this package. So on this demo.entity, I'll do a right click. I'll say new class. And the name of the class that we're going to create is called student. And I'll keep all the other defaults here for this dialog and I'll go ahead and hit the finish button. Okay, great. So it is very basic class. Let me go ahead and expand the window here. Uh, give myself some space to work in. Need some room to stretch. All right. So the first step, we're going to map the class to a database table. And just like we saw in the slides, the first thing I'll do here is I'll make use of this at entity. Uh, and then I'll say at table name equals student. So again, this basically maps this class or this entity to a given table in our database. And that's called student. Now let me fix the imports here and I'll show you another technique. I'll simply right click. I'll go to source and I'll choose organize imports. Now it's really important here, the imports we wanna use are from the Java X persistence package. So make sure you select Java X dot persistence dot entity because we wanna make use of the standard uh, in interface or references here for the annotations. And a similar thing here for table, make sure you choose Java X dot persistence dot table. And once you're happy with that, go ahead and click on finish. So on lines three and four, uh, yours should look similar to this, Java X persistence dot entity and table. And this is from the Java persistence API, which is a standard implementation. I'm sorry, it's a standard interface that Hibernate implements. All right, good, so we're on track there. Now let's go ahead and uh, one thing that we need to do is that we need to create a no argument constructor. So again, the constructor, same name as the class, so public student. So that's our no arg constructor, very simple. Very straightforward. All right, so we have our uh, class map to a table. Let's go ahead and set up our fields. So first off, I'll just go ahead and write out our fields here for, um, for this class. So I have ID, uh, the first name, I also have the last name, and then finally we have the actual email address. And this is all very basic stuff. You've probably seen this before in some of my previous video courses. All right, so getting a little white space here at the bottom. Now, uh, the next step here is to actually map these fields to database columns. So for this student, the ID is gonna be our actual primary key, so we make use of the at ID, and then we say at column, and we give the actual column name we're gonna use. So column name equals ID. That's the actual name of the column in the database. And again, I'll go through and I'll fix the uh, imports. Just do a right click, organize imports, and it should bring in uh, Java X persistence.id and also the Java X dot persistence dot column. All right, so that's what your imports should look like. All right, good. So we're doing pretty good here. Now let's go ahead and um, annotate all these other fields here. So I'll just do a copy paste on column. And here I'll say uh, name equals first underscore name. Again, column is the actual name of the database column and then last underscore name and then finally here I'll say email all right so this looks pretty good so this is basically annotating or mapping these Java fields to the appropriate database columns and again the actual database column names could be anything uh, as long as you map them explicitly here using the annotation 
Okay, great. So we're making really good progress here. I'm just going to add some convenience methods here to help us out. These aren't required, but I'll just add another constructor here because we'll actually use it later on when we write code. So I'll just do a right click. I'll go to source and I'll say generate a constructor using fields. This will bring up a dialog. Um, I'll choose the options, first name, last name, and email. I'll uncheck the ID because I'm not going to use it later on. So those are the uh, three fields I'll have here. I'll hit OK. And it should give me a constructor very similar to what we have on line 29. So a constructor that takes a first name, last name, and email and makes the assignments. Uh, the super reference I had on line 30, uh, I removed it. So now it's just very simple, the constructor. So that's how your constructor should look. I'm also going to generate getters and setters. So again, right click source and then choose generate getters and setters. And I'll just uh, choose the select all option over here on the far left. I'm sorry, on the far right. And that will help us out here. So I'll hit OK at the bottom and voila, Eclipse will go off and do all of this fancy work for us by generating those getters and setters. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. And then finally, I'm going to add one more convenience method here, uh, the two string method. So I'll do a right click. I'll choose source and I'll say generate two string. And once this dialog pops up, I'll just keep the defaults that they have here for the fields, ID, first name, last name, and email. And then I'll hit OK. And the reason I like to add the two string method is mainly just for debugging purposes. So I can print the, uh, print out the object and get the actual details for it. So nothing really re required here by Hibernate, but I just like to use it for debugging purposes. All right. So that's pretty much it. So our step two is complete. So we basically went through the process of annotating our Java class. So we, on um, lines eight and nine, we map the class to a table. Lines 12 through 23, we actually mapped the fields to database columns. So this looks good. We're in good shape right now. So I'm looking forward to the next video. I'll see you there. Yeah.